Collectively, we can all agree we want justice for the Idaho Four. The debate is on who did it. Some individuals believe Brian Kohlberger is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Other people believe he's absolutely innocent. And there's people in the middle who only see suspicion and need to see more. But if you believe the frat was involved, or it was one of the jacks, the common hurdle you have to overcome is explaining how Brian Kohlberger's DNA ended up at the crime scene. What logical reason does anyone from the University of Idaho have to plant the DNA of a random PhD student from Washington State University who has no ties to Moscow whatsoever? At least not that we know of. But what if I said we're looking at the wrong university? Who would have the motive to frame Brian Kohlberger? And who would have the knowledge to do so? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. And if an open conversation is something you prefer, then this is the place for you. Welcome to The Point. So let's talk about it. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Let's face it, Moscow is a very small town and there are connections everywhere in this case. And I'm pretty sure the local dentist has ties to 1122 King Road if you look hard enough. And since this is a small town, we all naturally want to look for somebody who has motive. Now the first person a lot of us looked at was the ex-boyfriend Jack. His motive, of course, would have been Kaylee's leaving. She's taking the dog with him. Or there was some possible issue where he still wanted to be with her, but she didn't want to be with him. And then we had the famous hoodie guy pop up. Now, it was alleged that that was Jack Showalter. And according to that video, Jack Showalter would be the last person to see Kaylee and Maddie alive who actually knew him. And when you looked at that video, it looked as if Kaylee and Maddie were trying to separate from him. And they bolted off in one direction, and then he took off in another. And then there was that alleged fight at Sid Mackay. And people have speculated that that fight was what caused those four individuals to pass. And none of us can forget the knife-wielding odd neighbor Enon Harsh. Or that oddly timed DoorDash delivery. When you think about it, the list goes on and on. But the problem is none of these rabbit holes fully explain how Brian Kohlberger's DNA ended up at the crime scene. What possible ties do any of these potential suspects have to Brian Kohlberger? Now right offhand, I can't find any, and if you know one, let me know down in the comments below. But what if we're focusing on the wrong student? What if we're focusing on the wrong university altogether? And if you like what I'm doing on this channel, hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Because what if I said we shouldn't focus on what the state is saying? We shouldn't be looking at where the state is saying Brian Kohlberger was, but rather we should be looking at where Brian Kohlberger worked at. Does that idea seem far-fetched to you? And if you said yes, what if I told you I could provide a motive? Remember early on when Brian Kohlberger was named a suspect, what were some of those early stories and reports about? There were allegations that Brian had planted a camera in another female's apartment to spy on her. We've also heard stories from neighbors that said he was up at odd hours of the night and kept kind of an odd schedule and also that he was socially awkward. There were rumors at one point in time that he was fired from his position at WSU because he was having problems with the female staff. So did he actually have any issues at WSU? What did some of his students say? He was pretty strict uh, as far as grading goes. His students now in disbelief. It was just like totally jarring, totally shocking to realize that this person that had been, you know, kind of grading my papers was, you know, allegedly this like horrible. Now, if Brian didn't commit this crime, who has the motive to set him up? Now, it was rumored from one of the students that he was a very strict grader. In fact, one interview that I couldn't find had made mention that he had a problem with how Brian was grading his papers because he felt like Brian was grading his papers at a master's degree level or something higher. Now, before any of y'all say him being a strict grader is not motive enough, I need you to hear me out for a second. And I need you to think about the pressure we're putting on kids right now to get a four-year degree. I would bet money at this point that there are people attending a university right now who believe if they do not graduate with this degree, they're going to end up in some type of deep poverty situation. They're not going to be able to afford a home. They're not going to be able to afford to buy food. 
they're going to end up living on the streets if they do not obtain this magical four-year degree. It's as if they forgot or they weren't told that they could very easily go get a two-year degree and land a job making six figures before you know it. And don't tell me I'm being ridiculous because go look at what a licensed plumber, a licensed electrician, and a licensed HVAC person is bringing home right now. It will absolutely blow your mind. So if one of his students had some sort of fictional fear that if he failed this program, he was going to end up on the streets, or if they had some sort of irrational fear of failure, would you not consider that motive? But let's dive into the know-how of this theory. Because some people at this point are saying it's absolutely ridiculous for a college student with no real criminal history to commit a quadruple passing. Oh wait, who would possibly, like Brian Kohlberger, have the knowledge on how to commit a crime like this and get away with it? Wouldn't a fellow criminology student have at least to a degree the same knowledge Brian has? And I know at this point some of y'all are rolling your eyes, but hear me out for a second. Of all these theories floating around online, who knows what type of car Brian drives? Who on this earth could possibly know Brian Kohlberger's daily activities or nightly activities? We have very recently heard from the defense that there's a potential for Brian to not even be in the state of Idaho during the time of this passing, while law enforcement says they have video surveillance footage of his vehicle heading towards Moscow. But the most important question in this theory is yet to be asked. What type of DNA was found on that knife sheath? And of all the theories floating around online, who are the individuals that would have access to the same things Brian Kohlberger touched? And have the knowledge that skin cells can very easily transfer from one object to another? Of all the theories floating around online, would the theory that one of these students from WSU set up Brian Kohlberger check all the potential boxes? Would this theory make more sense than one of the Jacks or somebody at the fraternity at the end of the day? Would they not have access to everything they would need to properly set somebody up and have the knowledge to do so? And before anybody says this theory is absolutely ridiculous, that if one of these students had a problem with Brian Kohlberger or somebody within that staff had an issue with Brian Kohlberger, then they would have attacked him directly. Let me just point out the exact reason why they wouldn't do that real quick. None of these people within this criminology field would absolutely target Brian Kohlberger directly if they had an issue with him because they would be fully aware that they have ties to him. And because they have ties, they would be discovered fairly quickly. And since we already know that both of these campuses co-mingled, wouldn't some of these students be aware that there is a well-known off-campus sorority house in Moscow that is currently occupied by all females? When searching for a better fit, does this not fit pretty good? Now this is of course a theory at the end of the day. And I may be way off base with this, and if so, you can let me know down in the comments below. Y'all be safe now.